Deep in the rugged, wind-blasted mountains of the Kyrgyz Republic lives one of the most prized big game trophies of the world, the Marco Polo sheep. Since the explorer in whose honor these mighty rams were named brought their existence to light beyond the sheep's isolated range, adventurous hunters have traveled to these remote mountains. Tim Fallon is a dedicated and far-traveling hunter, and he has left boot tracks over most of the globe's famous big game fields. Tim had long dreamed of hunting this species, and eventually he booked a hunt. In September, Tim left his native Texas and beloved FTW ranch and headed to the Kyrgyz Republic in quest of the holy grail of the sheep hunter, the Marco Polo sheep. Just as Jason of Greek mythology sought and suffered in his quest for the golden fleece, so will Tim Fallon do the same in his quest for the golden horns of the mighty Marco Polo as we open the pages of Trijicon's World of Sports Afield. Trijicon's World of Sports Afield has been brought to you by Trijicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions, DSC, the Dallas Safari Club, Ruger Firearms, Hornady Manufacturing, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, the Wildlife Gallery Custom Taxidermy Studio, Leica Sport Optics, Voight Harness Company, Global Rescue, Anytime, Anywhere. The Wild Sheep Foundation and by Les Chameaux, handcrafted since 1927. Normally, Tim's role at his Sam shooting school is that of an instructor. Yet in preparation for this hunt, Tim had been practicing what he preached. After his sportsman's all-weather, all-terrain marksmanship course, weeks of real-world shooting was behind him as he arrived at last in the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, we've landed in Bishkek, we've cleared customs. Uh, everybody's here, the luggage is here, guns are here, but he's pretty good mood, I'd say. <laughs> We're gonna hang around here today, uh, sight, do some sightseeing around town, do a little bit of shopping, and uh, rest up. We're all pretty beat, uh, but they don't wanna drive at night to the long drive down to the hunting areas. So we're gonna hang around here today and leave first thing in the morning. Giddy up, here we go. Bishkek is the jumping off point for arriving hunters, and Tim and his good friend and avid sheep hunter, Andrew McKay, decided to take in some of the sights and sounds of this ancient city. Bishkek sits at the 2600 foot level above sea level, and it's all uphill from there, as the sheep hunt starts at 10,000 feet. All right, well, Hey, we've just eaten breakfast here on the morning of day two. We're uh, all packed up and getting ready to head to the camps. It's about a 10 to 13 hour drive, so uh, hopefully we'll get to make a stop or two, but it should be, should be fun. This is a beautiful country. I'm very impressed with Bishkek. So anyways, we're on our way. One of the things I learned a long time ago in taking these long trips to foreign lands to do these magnificent hunts is take the time to stretch your legs, smell the fresh air, and get to know the local peoples. And the, the, the countryside is so unique. Um, you know, it's not the final destination that's important. It's the journey. And getting there, it's just a rewarding experience. One of the highlights for me was on the way into camp, we were able to get into a pre-wedding ceremony and uh, 
enjoy the customs and the cuisine and get to know everybody. It just helped everybody relax a little bit more for the long hunt we're about to endure. Well, we're, we're here, 12 hours on the road. This is a pretty rough ride, but this is some more beautiful country. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's cold, but there's no snow on the ground, not much. Clear, clear skies a little bit behind here. <laughs> Anyways, this is, uh, this is quite an adventure. It's been a long, hard grind, but Tim Fallon has finally arrived in sheep country. We're after the mighty Marco Polo when Trijicon's world of sports afield returns. The hunting tradition brought to you by Dallas Safari Club. I'm Diana Rupp, editor-in-chief of Sports Afield magazine with this week's installment of The Hunting Tradition. The mountains of Kyrgyzstan are known as the Tian Shan, which is Chinese for celestial mountains. The range spills south into China, and to the southwest it merges into the Pamir Range. The Tian Shan is one of the most famous mountain hunting destinations in the world. It's home to a wild sheep that grows the longest horns of any sheep in the world, the Marco Polo Argali. It's also home to the largest species of goat in the world, the Mid-Asian Ibex. Marco Polo traveled through these mountains in the 13th century, getting the sheep named after himself in the process, and his route later became the famous Silk Road. Since then, intrepid hunters have returned to hunt here, including Theodore Roosevelt's son Kermit, Elgin Gates, and many others. Although the tallest peaks of the Tian Shan soar to more than 24,000 feet, Marco Polo sheep are hunted at only 12 to 16,000 feet. That's one trophy that if you get it, you've earned it. You can learn more about the hunting tradition in every issue of Sports Afield magazine and at sportsafield.com. All right, well, here we are, first morning in camp. As you can see behind me, um, weather's not too good right now. I rolled in last night, and we've got real issues with visibility. Um, and the plan was this morning we were going to pack up and head to a spike camp about 25 miles away uh, for Ibex and, and Marco Polo. And with, this, with this visibility, we decided to just hang tight here, get our dope right on the guns, and pack up our stuff for that three day trip, and then. Uh, yeah, just kind of rest and relax, which wouldn't be a bad thing after three days of getting here. So, amazing country though. Glad to be here. Due to the change in both temperature and elevation, Tim knew that his impact point would be different since his siding in back in Texas. This hunt, like most sheep hunts, would come down to one shot, and Tim was taking no chances. Hey, we just uh, sighted in the rifles. Uh, we went out to 300 yards on this shot. We always try to do that wherever we go. The further out you sight it in, the more effect the atmosphere has had on the bullet, so you're just going to have a more accurate long shot. And I think the boys are duly impressed, and I sure hope we don't screw this shot up. <laughs> well, second morning in camp, and uh, the guys have decided we're going to go to a spike camp, probably about three days. So they're loading up the horses behind us here, and it's all our gear. And I think we've got about three days worth of stuff back, don't <laughs> it we? Looks like it. We got a pretty good night. Uh, yeah, it's going to be nice to get up in these mountains. It sure is it's a beautiful country, and I think we're going to try for the Marco Polo and the Ibex all in this three-day spike camp. So they've got an area picked out that's got both. So, so uh, yeah, I think we're ready. Let's do it. Let's go do it. Finally, three days into it, it's time to start. Let's do it. <laughs> We're in the saddle and headed to the top of the world when Trijicon's world of sports afield returns. First stop from camp, about two hours in, about 12 miles. We're in this deep valley, and I think we've spotted some sheep. It's interesting, these sheep are they hang in just below the heavy steep 
rock formations, yeah. and the ibex, of course, are in the rock formations. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, he says we must move on and go try to get closer, get a good look at it. sitting here trying to spot those Marco Polo. We trailed these two up here. They disappeared on the other end and we caught up with five young rams going over that end. We've got spotters over here and we're kind of sitting in a big saddle here. And the weather's getting kind of nasty coming in behind us over here. As you can see it bouncing off. It's kind of a sleet. It's not really a hail. But anyways, yeah, and the wind's picking up and the temperature's dropping. And welcome to sheep hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Life is good. Tim had hunted his fair share of mountain ranges and knew to expect two things in sheep hunting, bad weather and lots of glassing. Sheep country is big country and the hunter will often have to traverse rocky ridges and broad windswept valleys before a band of sheep is located. Horses make the travel at such high altitude much less physically demanding, but each valley must be carefully approached by foot, and each ridge painstakingly stalked so as not to skyline the hunter as he looks over the valley below. If no sheep are spotted after carefully glassing, then the hunter will saddle up for a climb into the valley. Marco Polo sheep inhabit a large and inhospitable range so they sometimes travel far in search of better pasture. We got two rams down here that uh, are worth a second look. Uh, they're, they're mature rams. So we're going to come down the bottom here uh, along the draw and we're going to slip up. We'll be probably 500 yards from them. Get a closer look and get them to look at us and get some better footage and see what happens. Same six rams we spotted from way up top. They've moved off down the valley. We've ridden down off the mountain. We're gonna try to do a sneak through the bottom and get you know get a better look at them. We'll just have a closer look. We'll see. Up breathing at 12,500 feet. This sheep's worth it. Tim Fallon settles the crosshairs on a lifelong dream. It's the sheep hunter's moment of truth when Trichicon's world of sports afield returns. And now, Inside the Hunt, brought to you by Hornady. One of big game hunting's realities is the fact that all the planning, expense, and effort often come down to one opportunity and one critical shot. The difference between the satisfaction of a clean kill or the regret of a missed shot is the result of one variable that the hunter controls, practice. The SAM precision training developed at the FTW ranch perfectly prepares its students for a wide variety of shooting situations, including long range. Confidence in both your equipment and your ability to perform under the stress of real world hunting conditions can only be achieved through preparation and practice the cornerstones of the sportsman's all-weather, all-terrain marksmanship training.
the final ascent toward the ridge is lost in deep thought. As your legs shift into auto climb mode, your mind prepares for the shot, perhaps the only shot you'll have at the great rams you have come so far to hunt. You know, and after a long, long horse ride and a lot of hiking in the mountains, we finally got up under those sheep. And, uh, this is where your training comes in. You've, you've got to remain calm, and the thoughts running through your mind are about a million miles an hour, and you want to make sure you do the right thing and don't take the shot if you don't think you can make it, and do the best you can if you think you can. Third one or second one? Yardage. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't get enough elevation. Hold one. Keep your eye on him. Yep. Let's go for Portland Island 450. 450 go, Connor. Come on. Five miles now, Wynn. One minute left. Shooter's ready. final steps of that hike up to that beautiful Argali, that was humbling. It, it, it comes with a, a deep satisfaction that it's impossible to describe. Well, I have to tell you, this is one of the most beautiful animals I've ever shot. Uh, a true trophy. This is the uh, Marco Polo from Kyrgyzstan which is there's some debate and apparently it is somewhat different than the Tajikistan Marco Polo. This is the original Hugh Margali Marco Polo. So it's a bit different, a little different color. Um, they don't get quite as long. They certainly get massive. Um, man, oh man, what a, what a beautiful trophy. Big sheep, they are absolutely gigantic as compared to our North American like doll sheep. Um, tough, tough, look at the stuff they live in. They'd have to, to live in this stuff. But thanks to Andrew and his wind calling and all the, the great guiding and what a great hunt. Thank you guys very much. Rock mud, rock mud, huh? <laughs> We came off the mountain with the sheep. As you can see, here's the hide and the horns. And they brought off all the meat. Amazing. It was just a blood spot left, actually. And uh, rode back up over the, the saddle we'd come over. And then came down into the valley and found some flat ground. We're going to spike camp here, get a good meal and a good night's rest. And great day. Beautiful country, great people. Hard working, good lord. They ain't afraid of anything, I can tell you that. So. Yeah, look, I'm very glad to be here, very blessed. Got a great trophy. Tim Fallon rested easy looking back on the day's events. The beautiful Argali was a physical trophy of a dream that had played in Tim's mind for years. There were many days left in the hunt, 
and Tim and his friends continued their quest in search of mid-Asian ibex. Unfortunately, long rides on horseback, endless glassing from cold vantage points, and hard hikes into jagged peaks failed to produce a good billy. Yet, this hunting trip was so much more than the taking of his sheep. It was, by anyone's description, a true wilderness adventure. Travel, old friends, new friends, the sheep, and the windswept mountains were all woven together to form the fabric of this high country safari. Overall, the sheep gods had smiled on Tim Fallon's efforts, and eventually, the Great Horns will have a new home where it will continue to transport Tim back to far off mountains and broad valleys that are the rugged home of the Rams of Legend. Trigicon's World of Sports Afield has been brought to you by Trigicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions, DSC, the Dallas Safari Club, Ruger Firearms, Hornady Manufacturing, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, The Wildlife Gallery Custom Taxidermy Studio, Leica Sport Optics, Boyd Harness Company, Global Rescue, Anytime, Anywhere, The Wild Sheep Foundation, and by Le Chameau, handcrafted since 1927. Closed captioning by Le Chameau, available at Orbis.com slash Le Chameau. Today.